I, uh, I'm 50 years old. I'm, I'm a native of Metairie. I was born here. I um, live here now. I have, as you said, a, a wife and uh, two little boys who are, um, they go to St. Catherine Church and uh, school. And um, I've been an attorney for 24 years. I, I became an attorney because I wanted to help the community and help protect people. And that's why. No, so I, I became an attorney to, to help the, the public and help protect people. And so I became an assistant district attorney where I prosecuted people who committed crimes against other people. And, um, and I started doing that in 2001. And um, so I've been an attorney for 23 years and 13 of those were spent as a prosecutor. Um, and as everybody knows, the um, community in Jefferson Parish has changed a lot from 2001. Yes. After Hurricane Katrina, the, it's, it's changed a lot and um, really got to see the legal system grow and adapt to the changes in the community. A lot of people don't understand exactly what goes on in court and what judges do. But um, as I said, the, the community changed after Hurricane Katrina. Everybody knows um, there was an influx of a lot of people who wanted to work hard and, and earn money. And, and there were a lot of people who were out there taking advantage of it. And so we saw a lot of crime being committed against people who had come to live here and, and just work hard. And um, they were victims of robbery. They were victims of theft. They were, they were very vulnerable. And what we also saw was... When they, a lot of them were afraid to come to court because they were afraid that, that something bad was going to happen if they came to court, that they were going to be grabbed by the police and deported. And so um, as an assistant DA, we had to work with Catholic Charities to help, um, help people realize that you know, they would get visas to stay and make sure that the person who victimized them got punished. As an assistant DA, we had to work, and this was all new to the court. The judges didn't understand these um, these visas for witnesses and victims of crime, and so we kind of had to teach the judges. You no, know, we need to we need to work on getting these visas so that people do feel comfortable coming to court, and they can face their the person who victimized them. <clears throat> Several years ago, I I tried a case where it was a. Uh, a man from Guatemala who was robbed and shot and killed. And we had to try that entire case in Spanish. Um, so we had to have interpreters for the entire trial because the witnesses all only spoke Spanish. And so it, it's, um, it's that type of thing and having that kind of experience of knowing how to do that and how to make everybody feel like they're welcomed and comfortable to come forward and get their rights vindicated. Absolutely. And I've, I've tried to reach out to, to every, everybody in the community. And not just um, not just the majority. I've, I've reached out to every group, and because um, I, I and I don't just want to tell them about me. I want to hear from them what's important for them. Um, but having all of that experience in the courtroom is just is just really invaluable. You have to have it to to know how all that works and to understand the resources that are out there to help victims of crime. In addition to the work that I've done as an assistant DA trying to protect victims. Um, I also have been very active in my community, and I think it's very important that people volunteer their time to make their community better. Um, I taught law school at Tulane Law for seven years, and that was volunteer work. I gave up my time to do that because in law school, they don't teach kids how to present cases in court. They teach them books, and so they needed practicing lawyers to go there and teach the law students professionalism in the courtroom, how to effectively present their cases, and I did that for seven years. I uh, also started a charity barbecue team that, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> that uh, this is our 11th year uh, competing this year. My team has raised over $100,000 alone for children with pediatric brain cancer. Wow. And um, in the charity, you probably heard of it, Hogs for the Cause. It's in two uh -huh. weeks. Yes, yes, um, yes. Anyway, we've built now two hotels at children's hospitals where families can stay for free while their child is being treated there. And um, I just think it's very important that we be active participants in our community and not just punch a clock and at the end of the day go home. And actually ran in 2020, um, and that was a huge turnout because that was uh, Trump versus Biden. So everybody <laughs> voted in that race. And it was during COVID, so it was difficult to get in front of people and meet people. Uh -huh. And um, at the end, I was, I was still really proud that I got... Um, Tens of thousands of people, 34,000, I think, people voted for me. Wow. And that was uh, during the time of COVID and a bunch of hurricanes. That was very, uh, very difficult to achieve. So Jefferson Parish courts handle civil, criminal, family, administrative law. They, they kind of handle um, everything. They're a court of general jurisdiction. 
Um, so when somebody's a victim of a crime, um, they, they would come to the 24th Judicial District. If they wanted to file a lawsuit over a certain amount, it would come to the 24th Judicial District. And so you're there for, for just general, every type of matter that can go before the court. But it's important that you have people in judge positions who have experience in all of the types of law that come before the court. Um, there is no substitute for experience. And I have tried to be treat everybody with dignity and respect for my entire career. And I just want to continue on um, for the people of Jefferson Parish to serve in that capacity. I, I think it's also very important that the judge have patience. Um, when you try a case in another language and you have a trial, the judge and everybody has to be very patient because it's time consuming. And, um, and making people realize that if you are the victim of a crime, we are there for you. We are there to help protect you, and that is part of the American system. And you have every right to it as everybody else who's here.